I use the illustrations a lot, but uh, not always object lessons. And so tonight, I don't, I don't really have the object lesson with me, but I want you to take your Bibles and turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. I did get some videos from the Holy Land from them, and I, I got to see uh, Brother Jason get on a camel. <laughs> now, the Lord blessed in 75, 1975, my wife and I were able to go take that trip. And of course, things have been much more developed and, and uncovered and unearthed now. And they're seeing much more. But we did the camel ride thing our, as well. You know, those things are hinged in about four different places. And when you get on one, they tell you, brace yourself because one end will come up and the other end will just stay. And then the other end comes up and it wants to throw you forward. And then the other end comes back up and manage. So I, in this video, he's got his arm out like he's riding a Bronco, <laughs> just a camel. But anyway, and his was nice. I got to tell him, man, he's got a nice camel. Camel I was on was kind of ornery. I mean, he tried to bite me and, and then they, they spit too sometimes. And his was just riding along really, really good. I tell you what. So, you know, I, when, when I get to see him, I'm going to say, man, what did they do? Give you a tame one or what? And, you know, so, uh, but he looked like he was having fun there. I'm just glad that that's not my mode of transportation, the camel. Yeah. Amen. So at that, anyway, uh, in Second Chronicles chapter 20 tonight, uh, the Lord uh, used this in my heart uh, personally. And uh, as we look at this, the title tonight is God wants to hear you sing. God wants to hear you sing. In verse number one of Second uh, Chronicles chapter 20, and it says, And it came to pass after this also that the children of Moab, the children of Ammon, and with them other beside the Ammonites came, up again, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria. And behold, they be in Hazan Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together and asked help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven and rulest thou not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee? Are not thou our God who did drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gavest it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever. Drop down with me to verse 15. Now he's prayed his prayer, and here's the answer. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat. This is through the, the prophet here. And he said, And thus, uh, I lost my place. Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Remember that. Sometimes we forget. And sometimes we think that it's just our battle. But when we're serving God, hey, listen, we don't do it alone. And so he reminds them that. And then in, uh, he says here, uh, verse 17, or excuse me, verse 16. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Drop down to verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. 
And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come up against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves, and they, uh, more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. Drop uh, over to verse 29. Verse 29. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God gave him rest round about. Let's pray. Father, I pray now you would bless. And Lord, again, Lord, I pray that you would just bring to my mind and Lord, help me to say those things that you won't say. And Lord, would you speak to hearts and uh, Lord, uh, in a way that you alone can, and God, uh, may each one of us be receptive and listen, God, as you speak to us and then respond to you accordingly. We love you, Lord. We thank you for how our hearts has already been blessed by the music and, and the singing tonight. And God, we ask now again that you would just be with us in the midst of us here and just bless in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you. And you may be seated. In reading this passage of scripture here and, and uh, looking at verses one and two and three, uh, I begin to look at this and begin to see what was transpiring here. Number one, Jehoshaphat uh, was told that these nations had united against him. They were all coming against him to, to battle. And so as a result, we find here, the Bible tells us that it was the Ammonites and the uh, Moabites and then those of uh, the uh, uh, seer that had come. And so as a result, they're, they're gathering together and they're coming to battle against him. When he got the word, the Bible says in verse 3, and Jehoshaphat feared. And Jehoshaphat feared. Now look, he had something to fear. There was something about to take place here. I mean, he was outnumbered. These, these, these uh, nations had aligned themselves against him. And as a result, the, uh, uh, we see what happens here is when he heard, uh, no doubt he began to think, you know, what are we going to do? I mean, they've all come together. They're going to come. They're going to try to conquer us. And so uh, we find fear had come in. We deal with fear at different times. Some fear is healthy fear. I mean, you know what? Uh, fear of the Lord. Amen. And, and uh, you know, I, back in, uh, it's been several years ago. You probably remember they were wearing these T-shirts, no fear. Everybody had no fear. I was in a camp and this, he's pretty good sized young man. He came up to me, had this T-shirt on. It said, no fear. And I said, Is, I see you got that. You, you don't, you're not fear, afraid of anything. You have no fear. And he said, not much at all. I'm not afraid. I said, well, uh, what if I told you right over here is a, a snake? And I brought that snake. He said, don't you bring no snake over here. I, I don't want no snake around me. And I said, wait a minute, hold it, hold it, hold it. Why? Well, I don't like snakes. I said, so would it be you're afraid of that snake? Well, yeah, but you just told me you're not afraid of anything. Hey, listen, I, then I told him, I said, son, don't worry. I'm not bringing you a snake. I'm not going to get anywhere near him. And so, you know, there's some healthy fears, but here we find that, that, that when Jehoshaphat has this fear, he knows how to handle it. Can I tell you something else? We live in a day and time right now when I guess I have seen more people operating in fear than I've ever seen before. We, we've had some things that's transpired. And, and look, I, I know COVID was a real disease. I understand that. And a lot of people suffer with it. But then there was also all the unrest and different other things going on, the economy. And I'm telling you, people started getting afraid. And, and, and instead of uh, doing what we see Jehoshaphat did, instead of coming uh, and seeking the Lord, we're going to look at that a little more in a minute. 
Many of them start to run the other way. Start to go away from the Lord. And many churches are still trying to recover from that time frame there where people started staying away from church. And you know what? We're, we're, we're not to operate in the spirit of fear. He didn't give us a spirit of fear. And so as a result, you know, there's a good study in the word of God in fear nots. Amen. Or be not afraid. And just look at that. I'll tell you, one of the verses we taught our kids was Psalm 56, 3. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. This past year at a camp in Kentucky, it was a junior camp, and I preached on the storms of life. And I was preaching on the storms. And I taught those kids what time I am afraid. They, they learned it. They memorized it that week. What time I am afraid, I'll trust in thee. One of those churches from Tennessee, I went down later on after camp to preach a revival down there. And the preacher got up, the pastor did, and he said, church, Psalm 56, 3. And the whole church quoted Psalm 56, 3. And the pastor said, preacher, you taught that to the kids. But I'm telling you, in my own life, I have been quoting that verse just in the recent past here with many things I face. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Our youngest son, when he was small, man, he was scared of storms. That's in Kentucky. I don't know what would have happened if we had been in Oklahoma, but, uh, but in, in Kentucky, he was afraid. Well, we were out during Bible school picking up kids and he was with me in the van. And I'm telling you what, a storm came up started rocking that van. I looked over there and he had his eyes shut and he was saying, what time I am afraid I will trust in thee. What time I'm afraid I will trust in thee. I said, look, let's say it together. Uh, you know, because, hey, listen, uh, fear, but we don't, we don't operate out of fear. You know what? He was afraid in the sense that he knew what the odds were. He knew that this army was a huge army, but he reacted in the right way. Amen. Uh, he said here, the Bible says, and he set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim a fast throughout all Judah. He said, I know the answer for my fear. It's the Lord. And he set himself to seek the Lord. And he uh, went in prayer and fasting. He knew, listen, he had a God that was bigger than all those armies. He had a God that was able. He had a Lord that he knew he could turn to. And you know what? There's many times we need to remember how big our God is and what he can do. You know, Nehemiah, when he was rebuilding that wall, had to tell the people, don't fear them. Just remember the Lord. And he's great and he's terrible. In other words, he's a God that can take care of anything. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And so we find that uh, he went and he, he fasted and he sought the Lord. But because of that, look what it says. And then verse four, and Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. You know what this turned into? A national prayer meeting. Hey, we are facing an enemy and we need the Lord's help. That's the only answer is the Lord's help. Can I tell you something? Wouldn't it be great if we could hear that in America today? We need the Lord's help. Amen. And there would be that time called upon for fasting and prayer. Here he called and the whole nation unites in that matter of praying and seeking the Lord in order that their fears may be soothed. The Lord would enable them to stand without that fear. And so they prayed. Thank God for prayer. Amen. Uh, man, I'll tell you, I never underestimate the power of prayer of just being able to talk to the Lord. I remember as a young Christian hearing my pastor preach and the and, and first time I ever heard, he was preaching on uh, uh, prayer and he, he started using the verses, pray without ceasing. And, uh, and when he started saying that, he started saying, you just need to be praying all the time. Well, after church, I was in the back and I said, pastor, uh, how can you pray all the time? I said, I work a job. 
If I got down on my knees and started praying, they'd probably fire me. And he said, who said you got to get down on your knees and pray? As a young Christian, he said, hey, it's not the attitude of your body. It's not the position of your body. It's the attitude of your heart. And he said, you can pray in any position. Just pray. He said, you can talk to the Lord. Stay in a constant attitude and a, uh, in a position of just talking to the Lord whenever you need to talk to him. You know what? That helped me so much. Because right then I realized wherever I was at, I could talk to the Lord. Amen. Whatever the need was, I could talk to the Lord. And, and boy, I tell you what, we need to remember, come boldly under the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find, hey, that help. They were needing help. What, what a great thing that we can get that help that we need. And so as a result, it said they came and they prayed and they asked help of the Lord in order that they could face this enemy. And he was there for them. Jehoshaphat then stood in the congregation, it says in verse five, and the new court, and he began to pray. And look how he prayed. O God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able. You know what he's doing? As he's praying, he's also remembering. <laughs> Amen. And reminding himself of who his God is. And what he's done in the past and what he can do now. Does us good sometimes just to reflect on what God has done for us. And how he has taken care of us. And so he, he's praying, but in that prayer, he's remembering who God is and what he's done and how he's there for them. And then, I, I, this is where it just really, for me, it got good when you get down in there, amen? I mean, you come down and now God answers and he says to them, look, the battle is God's. You, you, you just uh, go ahead and get prepared, but you're going to go out and set yourselves and stand you still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. Be not, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow just go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. In other words, here's what the Lord said. Don't be afraid of them. I'm going to take care of it. You just stand. You be prepared to go out and stand. But remember, the battle is mine. Remember, I'm going to fight for you. Just stand still and see what your God can do. Amen. We heard that once before, didn't we? Over in Exodus at the Red Sea, when Moses had to tell him, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You know, sometimes it's hard just to stop and stand still and watch God do what he can do. Sometimes we want to help him out. Maybe you're not like that. But sometimes if we're not careful, we say, well, what if? No, it's not what if. He's God. Amen. Amen. And so we, we look here and then he gives him that battle plan. And that battle plan he gives him is a very unusual battle plan. <laughs> here, here's what he says. He says, now go out. And stand. So the Bible tells us that Jehoshaphat had them all ready. And then in verse number 21, where I read, look what it says here. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army. Did you notice that? As they went out before the army, and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. So here Jehoshaphat calls them together. He appoints singers. Well, well where are we going to sing? Well, you're going to sing before this enemy out here. You're going to go out tomorrow and you're going to sing. You're going to go before the army. Uh, the singers are going to go before the army. 
you know, uh, I, I just kind of wonder the thoughts that might have went through some of their minds. I mean, here they are. Maybe, you know, they didn't have a, maybe a hymnal, but they might have had some some kind of words or music. I, I don't know. But, you know, they were all going to go sing. And, and, and to me, I just got to thinking, you know, if they're going out before the army, they had to say, what's the army going to do if we're going to go out and sing? Now, now, now Jehoshaphat, old king, um, there's enemy in that valley and they want to kill us. And they're going to kind of try to come up here. So King, what are we going to do if they come charging us? Just throw the songbook at them. <laughs> We're not soldiers. We're singers. I mean, the army, hey, they're going out before the army. And, and, and so Jehoshaphat said, that's right. You're, you're going to go out and you're going to sing. And he appointed the singers and told them, hey, you're going to praise the Lord and you're going to tell of his greatness and his beauty. You're, you're going to sing about the Lord. You know what? Uh, hey, we need to realize music is a part of worship. You know, I, 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 for years I, I, I've tried to preach. Hey, the song service is not to fill time. No, it's a time of singing to the Lord and praising the Lord. It's a, it's a way of, uh, of us praising him and giving him glory. And we need to sing and use our voices. And that's what Jehoshaphat is telling them. You, you need to lift up your voice and you need to sing. You know, my, our practice in our family, it's not because I'm a, a singer or anything, but I just love to sing. I mean, I love to sing wherever I'm at. Doesn't make it. And sometimes I do it without even thinking about it. It's not something I do intentionally. Praise the Lord. It just got, I, I just start. I mean, you know, and when our family, we, we just sang, we love to sing. When we traveled anywhere, we sang from the time we pulled out of the driveway till the time we got back when I wasn't correcting problems in the back seat. <laughs> I mean, uh, We'd start singing. One of our practices was we would sing a hymn or, or, or a, uh, some type of uh, spiritual song. And whatever the last word was, somebody had to come up with a song that started with that word. And we'd just keep it going, keep it going. And that first Christmas, I think uh, Brother Ben uh, married into the family and we got in the car, to, three different cars to go to Louisville to my wife's family. And we used walkie talkies. <laughs> yeah, so we could all sing together as we drove to Louisville uh, from Bowling Green where we lived at. Uh, I mean, just we, that's just been a way of life. And I'm going to tell you something. Hey, there's something about just lifting our voice up and, and singing unto the Lord. And, and it's, can I just say this to you? It's not about the quality of your voice. It's about coming from your heart, making melody in our hearts to the Lord. I've known people because somebody made a comment to them, they just wouldn't sing anymore. And they got robbed of the blessing of just singing. Now, watch this. Here's, here's the part where I love right here. And so I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to try to get into it and, and get through, but just hang on for a minute, okay? Because here's what happens. They get out there. Watch now, they get out there. Let me go back to where he's at. And he says in verse number 22, and when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against his children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come up against Judah, and they were smitten. I got to thinking about that. Did you know what? Whenever an army would go out and win a battle. When did they sing the victor song? After the battle. Amen. You know why? Hey, the importance of this. Jehoshaphat said, our God said he's fighting for us. Our God said, hey, he's going to handle this situation. So. They were singing by faith. Amen. Because here's what Jehoshaphat said. It's as good as already done. So we're not going to wait. 
We're just going to go ahead before the battle's even fought and we're going to sing the victor song and we're going to claim victory because we know our God is able and will do what he said. And so by faith, they went out there and they started lifting their voices up and they started singing about their God and his beauty and his holiness. And the, what's it say right there? Well, what, what does it say in that verse right there? It, he says in verse number 22, and when they began to sing and to praise. Amen. God in heaven said, they believe me. They're singing. He said ambushments. He, he took care of the battle right there, just like that. I, I love talking about singing. I, I love that uh, uh, illustration, a story of uh, John J. Jasper, the, the black preacher from years ago. And he was talking about, uh, he was talking about when he got to heaven and he met the angel and the angel said to him, John, uh, who would you like to see and talk to in heaven? And he said, uh, maybe you'd like to talk to Brother Moses. And he said, oh, I do I want to talk to Brother Moses? I do. I want to talk to him about the time when they all walked through the Red Sea on dry land, but not now, not now. And he said, so, so maybe, you'd like to, maybe you'd like to talk to Joshua. Oh, he said, yes, yes, yes. One day I want to talk to Joshua about the, going around the walls of Jericho and then boy shouting and those walls falling, but not now. And I love this one. He said, so maybe you want to talk to, to Paul. Oh, he said, do I ever. He said, man, I want to talk to Paul about when he was down there in Philippi to jail and he asylum was sitting there about midnight. And he said, Paul looked over at Silas and said, let's sing. And said, they started singing and said, the Lord up in heaven leaned over the battlements and he said, angels, hush up. My children are singing down there. And he said, God got so carried away with their singing that he joined in on the bass note and jarred the whole foundations of the earth. <laughs> and the jail doors flung open. Amen. But he said, of course, the end of the, the illustration, what he said was, but not now. Of course, the end of that was, you take me to the feet of my Jesus and just let me sit there and let me look up on his face. Amen. Yeah. But oh, let me tell you something. Just to sing and lift our voice up. I know most of you know, but about 32 years ago now, almost 32 years ago, when our youngest son, Andrew, was born, he was born with a twisted bowel that we knew nothing about and had to have emergency surgery at midnight. And they had to take out a portion of his, of his intestine. First night, he quit breathing four times. They kept calling us back there. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, that first week was a rough week in a sense with him and things that were going on. And they came to us and they said, look, we want you to know that there may still be a blockage. There's still nothing passing through the intestinal tract. And as a result, we're going to give it 24 hours. And if something doesn't happen, he's going to have to have more surgery. But we're going to be honest with you. We don't think he'll survive the surgery. But unless it changes, he won't survive without the surgery. But you got 24 hours. I got to tell you something, man. I hit rock bottom. I, I went back to where my parents, we had, we had had him taken to Louisville because we both had family there. And I went back and I just, I fell across the bed and wept till I couldn't weep anymore. And I said, Lord, I'm empty. I, I'm, 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 I, I just can't do anything without you. I need you. And I Usually go up and I'd relieve Denise so she could come home and get rest because she'd be up there during the night. And I, I mean, during the day and then I'd go up at night. I, I brought her home and I went back to the hospital and I brought her home and I got back up there and they tried to put a pick line in and he did, his platelet count was down and he was bleeding. It was a mess, but they'd given him platelets and the nurse was cleaning him up. And she was, uh, she told me, she said, Daddy Decker, you sat down in the rocking chair over there. And when I get done cleaning him up, you're going to hold him. Well, I had not, I had not held him up until then. And I looked at her and I said, no, no, I'm not. I said, he's got too many wires and tubes and everything. She said, did I ask you? I didn't ask you. I told you, sit down in the rocking chair. <laughs> she was a retired army nurse. I sat down in the, in the rocking chair. 
she'd come over and put him in my arms. And our habit was to sing to him. We'd sing. My wife put a little sign in his, in his little crib there that said, thank God for dirty diapers because he couldn't have any. And she put Jeremiah 33, 3. And those nurses would come in and say, is that really what that verse says? Thank God for dirty diapers. <laughs> and that night, for the first time I could ever remember, I could not sing. I, I would open my mouth, but it just wouldn't come out. And I said, Lord, I'm sorry, Lord. I, I just, I'm having trouble. I know you're God and I'm trying to trust you for whatever your will is. But Lord, it just, I just seemingly can't sing. I, I, I know you're in control and I'm your servant. And I heard beep from a computer sitting on the counter behind me. And I turned around and when I turned around, this saying flashed up on the computer, just somebody had put on there. And here's what it said. The bird doesn't sing because he has an answer. He sings just because he has a song. And I'm going to tell you something. Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and said, you don't have to have the answers, Joe Decker. But when you got saved, I put a song in your heart. And I started singing, Jesus loves me. And then I went from Jesus loves me to another one. And I'm sitting there holding him and singing. And all of a sudden I hear something and I feel something. <laughs> and I hollered to that retired army nurse, praise the Lord, nurse, come here quick. And she said, what's wrong? What's wrong? And I said, I heard something and I feel something. And she said, give him to me. And she checked and she said, well, you better praise the Lord because we didn't know what else to do. But it looks like everything's all right. Amen. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. God wants us to hear us sing even in the difficult times. He gave us a song. Psalm 40 tells us he put that song in our heart. These, these uh, uh, people of God, they got out there and they started singing the victor song even before the battle was fought, showing their faith and their trust in the Lord. And I want you to understand, man, the Lord heard and he began there to, to, to fight that battle for them and give them that victory that they could have. They were spared the fight. They stood there and did not have to lift a sword. They stood there and did not have to throw a spear. And when they went out, they looked down and they were all dead. God had done taking care of the whole situation. Said so when they got down to the tire there, they had done fought against each other. They just turned on one another and they killed each other and they were all laying there dead, the Bible said. They came down and they saw it, but I want you to notice this. God blessed them. You'll see the spoils that they went and got three days in gathering the spoils. It was so much. God honored their faith. God said, because you trusted me, not only will I fight your battle, but I'll give you those blessings besides. And they got the spoils for three days. And then the, the Bible goes on and tells that, that all the kingdoms round about begin to hear that God fought for Judah, that he, they begin to hear. And then the Bible says, so the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet for his God gave him rest. Round bow. Let me tell you something. It was a very different battle plan, but it was God's battle plan. Same way it was in Jericho. I doubt our generals would have fought with that battle plan at all. Amen. But listen, God was the one in control. I, I got to thinking about that. You know, the matter of having a song, uh, there was a, young man by the name of Rodney Griffith, and he wrote a song entitled, God Wants to Hear You Sing. And God does want to hear us sing. We have a song, I believe, for him, and we need to sing and not hold back. God blessed him with a bounty. And then I got to thinking about, you know, over in Psalm 137, the Bible said in captivity, they hung their harps in the willow tree. 
and they could not sing the songs of Zion. And you know, as I was reading that, and I've read out, I've read out many times and preached out of it, and I was just thinking, here they were in a strange land. Here they were around people that did not know their God. Did not those people need to hear who their God was? Did they not need to be told the greatness and the beauty of his holiness? But they hung their harps in the willow tree. They got robbed of their song. They got robbed of their song. You know what the devil wants to do? If he could, he would rob every one of us of our song. He would, he would take that in a sense so that we were not singing unto the Lord. And so we find here that I begin to think about just singing and, and the matter of lifting our voices up and making melody in our hearts. You, you, you go out in public. You, you just start quietly singing a gospel song, a hymn. You just start doing that. You know what? You might get some attention. People might just pay attention. I, I was in a thrift store in Cincinnati, Ohio, and I was just walking down the side. Just, I wasn't even thinking about what I was doing, but, but I, was, I was singing a gospel song as I went down through there and talking about how he was on the old rugged cross. And I was going down through there. And about that time, a man came around from the end that I had no idea. And he said, hey, buddy, I just want you to know I've trusted the one that hung on that cross, too. He said, I heard you just singing about him. Yeah. People are listening. People are listening. Uh, they're in Bowling Green. I, 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 like I said, I don't pay any attention sometimes. My wife and I going through the checkout line and I was just humming. I wasn't even singing words. I was just humming. And, and I was humming a gospel song, a hymn, and I was humming. And the checkout lady said, somebody sure is happy today. <laughs> and I said, well, this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And she started to cry. And I said, ma'am, is there anything I can help you with? And she said, you know, I'm saved. I'm a Christian, but I'm having a rough day. But it'd be a whole lot better if I could sing than gripe. You know, sometimes our song is what the world needs to hear. They need to hear the song from the heart. You see, God said, hey, listen, sing the victor song. They said, Jehoshaphat, excuse me. He said, just go ahead, get out there and sing about and praise the beauty and holiness of our God. Praise the Lord, his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing, God set the ambushments and he won the battle for them. To sing, sing, lift up your voice unto the Lord and make a joyful noise unto the Lord to let him hear from our heart. You see, this is a, a, a battle plan that every one of us can practice in our day-to-day -day life by trusting God and remembering He's a God to table and remember and trust him when we face situations, seek his help in prayer and then be willing to stand for him. That's all they were required to do. Stand and let God be God and trust him to take care of the situation. And may God help us when we face those obstacles or that opposition to remember where our help comes from and to look to him and just go ahead and sing the victor song just like they did. Let's bow our heads. Maybe you're here tonight and I don't know, I don't know what each of you is has in your heart or what's going on in your life. But I do know we got a God that cares and he loves you. And he's there and he tells us to come boldly under the throne of grace 
to obtain that mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. And tonight, maybe you would want to come and just say, Lord, I, I've been trying to do it on my own, but Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need you. And just go ahead and claim that victory in the Lord and be willing to obey and follow his plan in your life. Not our own plan, but his plan. You know, I believe if they had gone out there and they had did it their way, they'd have got defeated. But they did it God's way. And they had victory. That's the difference, whether we try to do it the way we want or whether we do it God's way. The difference between victory and defeat sometimes. Let's stand with our heads bowed and we'll pray. Father, come to you today.